Hello everybody. Have you been told that you've got hip dysplasia? It's not that common, but it is a problem, especially when it starts to cause pain, stiffness, arthritis, and eventually surgery. In this video, we'll have a look at hip dysplasia in adults, what it is, how it's diagnosed, and of course, how it's treated. Keep watching and I'll tell you all about it. Hip dysplasia is a broad spectrum of structural abnormalities of the hip joint. About 1 in 10 babies are born with wobbly hips. Doctors check all babies' hips within a day or two of delivery. 90% of those hips will tighten up and never cause problems. But in the ones that don't improve, there's probably a structural abnormality of the hip joint called developmental dysplasia of the hips, or DDH. In severe cases, the socket of the hip joint hasn't formed properly. These children need prompt surgery to correct the problem because if it isn't picked up early, the hip won't grow properly and this leads to major problems in adulthood. Let's look in more detail at adult hip dysplasia. Common to all types of these problems is that the ball part of the hip joint doesn't sit neatly inside a deep, secure socket. It's too shallow or misshapen. This means that the joint is less stable. The articular cartilage, the lining of the joint, wears out faster. Arthritis develops sooner than it should, often in your 30s or 40s, rather than more normally in your 60s, 70s or 80s. It often doesn't cause problems until you're in your 20s. There definitely seems to be an increased incidence of dysplasia in people who have loose joints. It's definitely more common in gymnasts and ballet dancers who are naturally very flexible. It's likely that because of their hip dysplasia and their loose ligaments that they have an increased range of movement that allows them to do what they do so well. It's more common in women and there's usually a family history so in this case you can blame your mother. How do you know if you've got it? This is what most people experience. You often have pain in the hip joint itself. For most people that means pain in the groin and the upper outer aspect of their thigh. The pain is often there on walking or after exercise. People describe it as a deep ache or catching sensation, as if something's not right in the joint. You might limp. You might not notice it yourself, but friends probably will the stiffness and a loss of the range of movement of the hip. For example, cutting your toenails becomes a bit of a nightmare. How do we diagnose hip dysplasia? It's not just wear and tear. In my experience, it's usually the case that the diagnosis isn't made for several years. You've probably been told that you're too young to have hip arthritis and it's just muscle pain. By the time people come to see me, it's pretty obvious that things aren't right. Getting it diagnosed promptly is really important. So if you've been told it's just wear and tear without a formal assessment, go back and ask for one. Quite often people have had x-rays done that are reported to show no abnormalities. But the appearances of dysplasia can sometimes be quite subtle and often overlooked. It's essential to take a careful medical history asking about whether you've had any problems with your hips as a child. Did a close relative have hip problems when they were young? Were you told that you had growing pains? We'll get some x-rays to see if your joint is abnormal. We'll maybe get an MRI scan to check for cartilage damage or a tear of the labrum, which is a common problem in hip dysplasia. We might use a CT scan in some cases, especially if we're planning surgery. Hip dysplasia is a complex abnormality of the hip joint and the bones and muscles around it. It's not going to change. Physiotherapy won't change the anatomy of your hip joint, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try non-surgical options first. Physiotherapy helps to strengthen your core muscles and hip muscles to improve joint stability and to get you in better shape for surgery if you're going to need it. How do we manage pain? Well, anti-inflammatories, paracetamol, codeine and cortisone injections can help to keep the pain under control whilst you're getting fit and thinking about what to do. If running makes it worse, try swimming, pilates or cycling. Losing weight and taking supplements can help. If you're perimenopausal, you might consider taking HRT because this can really help. For some people, these measures keep the symptoms at bay for many years. But if you're losing mobility, struggling with pain or developing arthritis, you might need surgery sooner rather than later. 
There are two main surgical options for people with dysplasia of the hip. First of all, there's conservative or bone preserving surgery. This is called a periacetabular osteotomy. It's usually done in younger patients who are under 40 before arthritis is established. It involves cutting and realigning the hip socket. It's complex surgery that's done by super specialist hip preservation surgeons. If I see someone who might benefit from this, I'll refer them on to an expert who will give us a robust opinion on what needs to be done. There's a long recovery period, but it can delay or prevent the need for hip replacement to the long term. So let's look at hip replacement surgery for dysplasia. If the arthritis has already set in, a hip replacement is usually the best option. It removes the damaged joint and replaces it with a shiny new metal, ceramic and plastic one. You can expect a big improvement in pain, mobility and function, but it's not something you want to do too early if you can avoid it. Hip replacement for hip dysplasia is a bit trickier compared with more straightforward hip arthritis. The shallow socket means that there is sometimes not very much bone available to fix the titanium cup into place. Dislocation of a hip replacement is more common in dysplastic hips because people have abnormal geometry and people with dysplasia are often quite loose jointed as I mentioned before. If I'm going to do surgery, I do a very careful preoperative plan in these cases and have special types of implants available to overcome these problems. Here's one made from 3D printed titanium. It's very grippy on the outside surface where it connects with the bone. You can fill in bone defects with titanium augments. These are like segments of an orange. Bone grows into the rough surface. Big screws can help to fix it all into place while the bone grows into the titanium mesh. Do you need surgery? Well, it really depends on your symptoms, your lifestyle, and whether or not your hip is more of a nuisance rather than a life-changing problem. If you think that you have hip dysplasia, get it properly diagnosed, particularly if there's a family history of early onset hip arthritis. Don't just accept wear and tear as an answer. Do you have any questions? Put them in the comments below or get in touch. The details are in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.